Woohoo! All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, puppies and kittens of all ages. Welcome once again to Mark and Rove. We need new friends. New friends. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, we always What's up, Marky do. If Mark? you knew our, oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. If you knew our friends, you would know what we mean. Um, but we'll yes. get on to that later. Uh, just want to start things off by saying, uh, once again, we dedicate uh, this, like all of our shows, to um, all of our frontliners out there. Even though uh, restrictions have been eased this week, um, mm -hmm. it is still tough out there. The, um, there's still no cure. So the people in the front line and all the people uh, supporting them are uh, still our heroes, as are, uh, I think, um, around the world, uh, a lot of people that are protesting for different reasons, whether it be the Black Lives Matter movement, whether it be the Hong Kong protests, uh, <clears throat> whether it be uh, the terrorism, uh, anti-terrorist uh, bill. There are so many um, people out there uh, fighting for what they believe in, and it is very, very admirable. Um, I personally dream of a world where everyone is equal, is treat each other, uh, treats each other equally, and there is no sense of privilege from birth all the way to the very, very end. Um, but uh, yeah, how about you? How's your how's your week been, buddy? Well said, Mark. Uh, I love how you en encapsulated just what's going on in the world. Isn't it ironic and insane that COVID-19 and the global pandemic is probably fourth on the news chatter? Isn't that crazy that yeah. I actually went on the news today, which I've been watching religiously 24 hours because of what's going on in the States and, and the uh, social mm. injustices there. But I couldn't find anything on COVID-19. It's it's just how it just shows you how insane the world is right now. <laughs> yeah, just just when you think it couldn't get any worse. So actually, I, I think I think this is a good time to like uh, uh, I know everyone, you know, I know I've been watching social media. I know that you've been watching social media and, and it. And it really gets us down. So sometimes we need uh, to take a, a bit of a break from that. I know that we we both uh, are uh, stalwart um, uh, proponents of everything that uh, that people are fighting for around the world today. But uh, we do want to also give people a little bit of a break. I mean, because honestly, the world sucks right now. So I do believe it is time that we take everyone back, you know, back to simpler times uh, when we're able to complain about overpriced movie tickets and um, where the only mask we were really interested in was the movie starring Jim Carrey. Um, the times of like uh, great music, terrible fashion, awesome gadgets, uh, you know, incredible movies, um, uh, great TV shows, the whole lot. So ladies and gentlemen, join us as we throw you back tonight. And uh, we have some awesome guests for tonight as well. Um, but I'm gonna ask you first, Ro, what are your greatest memories of um, that period, uh, say the 90s? Well said, Mark. Happy uh, hashtag TBT. Happy Throwback Thursday to everybody. I love the times when back then the only curfew we had to worry about was our parents, not the curfew now where we might get killed if we defy the curfew. Isn't that crazy? But, um, <laughs> you, you know, the 90s where... God, there were so many things, I mean, from music to fashion to just simply, you know, coming out of our shells, both of, uh, both you and I, that was pretty, we're pretty much the same age. And I tell you, that yeah. was the moment, that was the decade when I realized the value of money because of the fact that I, fi I got my first job, you know, and that mattered when you were making your own money. Um, my first job was I was working as a uh, a lifeguard at the local uh, oh, wow. Raging Waters in San Jose. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was a fun job. Didn't make a lot of money, but, you know, cool gig, uh, summer job, got a nice tan out of it. You know, you, you, did you, you ever save you anyone's the... life? No, I was assigned to the kiddie pool area <laughs> and uh, maybe the intermediate area. So it, it was so all you had to do was basically gig. pick them up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got to wait through pretty... through like through kitty kitty pool pee all day. Yeah, uh, I didn't think about that at the time, but um, you know th those were weren't my concerns. But yeah, I saw some pretty interesting things in the water at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, it, it was I, a fun I, well, experience. Well, I, I like the fact that you mentioned that that was where you learned the value of money because yes. that's something that serves us so well 
later on in life. And mm -hmm. actually in line with that, um, I want to mention our raffle because a great way that people mm. can save money is by joining our raffle tonight because we're going to be giving going to be giving away another 1,000 pesos worth of produce uh, care of our uh, wonderful friends over at um, do, 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 uh, well, Fresh Produce PH. Fresh Produce PH. There we go. Um, yeah. There they are. Now, all you have yeah. to do is comment. Uh, leave a nice comment. Yeah. Uh, tell us all about uh, I don't know, like your, your craziest uh, stories from middle school or the 90s or, you know, the crazy stuff you did with your friends, stuff you might regret. Leave your comments. Um, and then at the end of the show, we'll hold a raffle and we will see which one of you walks away with a thousand bucks worth of fresh produce, which is very great during these times. It means you don't actually have to go out and do any shopping. But yeah, the 90s, brother, um, that's where I learned the value of money and how important it was because I was surviving off of allowance for a long time. But uh, when, when you start making your own money- You got allowance? Was, <laughs> yes, hard earned allowance, but we clean up the house and do all kinds of things. You didn't get allowance? Uh, yeah, actually I did, but uh, only until I started working, which was, I think I started working when I was, the, my first job was when I was 14 and I was okay. a paper boy. Okay, how and was that? When I started, get, when I got my first job, the allowance dried up. Oh, um, <laughs> they were smart. They were yeah, smart. Yeah, I know. I was like, damn. They're like, yeah, yeah. you should get a part time job. Absolutely go for it. I'm like, okay, great. I'm thinking, great. I'll, I'll get a part time job. I'll get that and I'll get my allowance. No, that, that's not the way it works, apparently. Um, right. you, but uh, you yeah, started I, I did young. all sorts of jobs. Yeah, 14, yeah. Well, it was pretty young. Okay. Did your mom instill that in you on, on purpose? Uh, you know, you got to start working or this is something you volunteered to do? It was something I volunteered to do. Um, mm -hmm. A friend of mine was was doing it as well, and I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's a nice. I'd like to have a little bit more disposable income of my own, so yeah. uh, I did that. And then I worked in a supermarket stacking shelves, and I worked in a barber okay. shop, like sweeping the floor, um, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I I haven't stopped working since then. Um, right. Uh, good, good, so, good. but yeah, yeah, it's, I think it's really yeah. important, as you said, to learn the value of money, but let's talk about yeah. like some of the, the fun stuff that we did, uh, back then. Did you ever get up to any, like, you know, hijinks or anything in middle school? Um, you know what? I, I hate to, to tell people this, that, uh, they're, you know, the way I am now, they're probably expecting I was the baddest kid. I definitely was the class clown, but we well, they, were they are wearing a Guns N' Roses, like, you know, sleeveless <laughs> shirt. Yeah, you look like the hey, rebel, man. In honor of Throwback Thursday, bud, where, where's your uh, 90s outfit? I had the perfect shirt to wear tonight. It was a keep on dancing t-shirt with like pictures of all of us on it. But you know what? I think I gave it away uh, to volcano victims in the last drive. I was like, you know what? I haven't worn this in decades. Um, I took a picture of it somewhere and then I, I just like, I was like, I put it, I was like, it's been sitting in my closet unworn for two decades. So I was like, okay, it's I, time to let it go. You know what? I want to give a personal shout out to that, uh, the Al victim who's out there wearing that t-shirt. If you can give it back to me, I will pay you a thousand pesos for it. That is... That belongs in, in, in the, on the walls of Planet Hollywood Manila, okay? That, that is iconic, bro. Why did you give that away? Okay, if you're there hearing me, whoever owns that shirt, find me. I will buy it off of you. We, we, that needs to be reprinted, Nelson. What, what are you doing, man? <laughs> uh, no. I, I, need to, I need to find the CD that we are talking about earlier. It's, it's there somewhere. Sorry. Mark, since you brought up uh, <coughs> some of the Kalokohans <coughs> that uh, we did back in the day, now this was a time when... <laughs> Uh, in the States, of course, the legal alcohol uh, age, drinking, drinking of alcohol age. is 21. Yeah, the legal drinking mm. age. Uh, I was clearly under it at the time. And I remember, uh, since you brought up what well, was one of the Kalahokans we did. Kalahokans? Kalakokans. Kal Kalahokan is a place where you buy Kal motorcycle parts. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, Kal Kalakokokan mm. is doing a Kalahokan in Kalaokan. Okan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, the shenanigans that I did, uh, that we did because we were under the drinking age, I remember 
we've mm-hmm. produced fake IDs. So we went as far as producing fake IDs because we were a bunch of nerds. One, uh, some of my friends had older brothers and we would get their IDs and, and we would put our names on it and, and our pictures on it. Or no, we put our pictures mm-hmm. on their IDs, laminate it and, and mm-hmm. use it as a fake ID. Now, what we would do is we would go to liquor stores <clears throat> that had white people owning them and, and running the cash register because white oh. people couldn't t- you know they they thought all asians looked the yeah, same so asian. we usually got away with it yeah so we we never went to asian owned liquor stores so that was the first time where we used reverse racism in our favor and uh we were able to get a bunch of liquor going to white owned liquor stores so hey that's a tip for you guys out there if you want to get uh, liquor use a fake id and uh, wow you may you forged <laughs> ids <clears throat> we oh did. my god that's we did. terrible Wow, what that that is a terrible, terrible thing to do. What are you teaching our youth? That is horrible. So let me tell you about when I forged ID. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> so I was do? in Go. I was in high school, and uh, you have like um, uh, work experience, right? Yeah. Uh, like, so you know, you choose a, a job and you go and you work there for a week instead of going to school, and so. I decided that I always, I was like, wow, you know, I want to learn how to bartend. So I went and did a cocktail bartending course, which was great. It was a week long course. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, And I got top of my class. Uh, It was, you know, it was great. And uh, that weekend I decided, okay, I'm going to go out now that I've got my cocktail bartending uh, certificate, I'm going to go out and try and find a job in a bar, which I promptly did. However, I was only 17 at the time, and the legal age for drinking or serving alcohol in Australia was 18. So what I had done is I'd gotten my brother's old license, and I, I scratched out uh, his name uh, because it was a paper license. It wasn't laminated or anything back then, and in Australia at least. And I was, got a pen knife, and I scratched out the, um, his name, put in mine, just like the first name, like typed it in and then scratched out the uh, the expiry date because it was his old one and typed in a new one. And yeah, I went and, and I got a job. Uh, and <laughs> while I was in while I was in high school, I was bartending on the weekends. Are you serious? You were feeding <laughs> yes. alcohol to people you weren't you're, you're not even old enough to be giving alcohol. <laughs> yes. Um, That's and I awesome. did eventually I did eventually get caught. Um, uh, but you know, I was already 18 and one of my friends from school, you know, like, okay. uh, she was also at that time, 18 and she was working in the bar upstairs legally. And she came down to see me. I wasn't there. And she's like, oh, I'm here to see, see Mark. Like, oh, you go to university and like, oh no, we go to high school together. And I'm like, what high school? And then that's when they busted <laughs> me by, by that time I was already 18. So they're like, you could have gotten us into a lot of trouble. Just, yeah, just don't tell anyone. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Uh, How many people do you think you served? How many people Hundreds, did I serve? thousands? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. E- easily. Yeah, it was, um, it was an incredibly busy bar. It was actually um, one of the biggest uh, restaurants in Sydney at the time, um, okay. actually in the Southern Hemisphere, in, in a very high tourist uh, traffic area. Um, but yeah. was, but the, the funny thing is, whilst I served alcohol, I didn't drink. That's, that's the time when I, I wasn't drinking anymore. Um, yeah. I'd already done my my uh, my underage drinking before that, uh, right, and right, by the right. time I started working in bars, I, I wasn't interested anymore. Right, right. Um, um, oh wait, wait. What? Before we get, yeah. I want one regret. Give me one regret that you did, and amongst the many many regrets, really quickly, uh, back in the day, of of uh, I, I know you thought about it, and 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 it, it no, still gives you nightmares to this day. <laughs> Oh, you haven't? Okay, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with one. I go, go, go. Give, give you time. Okay, so the cell phone just came out, and and uh, I couldn't afford one, but my dad, because of his work, he was given a cell phone strictly for work. Now, uh, my dad didn't work on the weekends, uh, so he put the cell phone in the closet, you know. And uh, I would, I remember, I would grab the cell phone and and bring it out and sneak it out. 
and put it, it was one of those Motorola's and it had a leather case and I would put it on my belt to make sure people saw it, you know? So it was, and it was big. <laughs> it was like the size of a brick. It was fucking huge. And it was on my side and I would pimp it so hard. You know, I just walk around. Yeah, I got a cell phone. It was a Motorola StarTac. I think that was what it was. Was it? A, yeah. Anyway. And, um, um, yeah, when people be like, oh, oh, can I see the phone? Can I see the phone? I'd be like, yeah, 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 I'll show you the phone. And then I'd show it to them. And then they'd be like, oh, can we call a number? And I'd be like, no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't, I, you know, I, let's not, I don't want to waste the battery. Of course, I didn't know the code to it or I, you know, I didn't want my dad to know that I took it. But I remember that I was pimping it so hard, flexing. And I was such a poser with my dad's phone. And I never, and, and I still remember being on the side of the street or the bus. I'm waiting on the bus station and I have it out just pretending I'm talking to people with the <laughs> antenna out when I'm, clearly there's no one on. What a fucking poser. That is what I regret. What about you, Mark? What do you regret? <laughs> I, I regret that I, I don't have stories like that to tell. Jesus. Um, uh, my greatest regret, I think, was, uh, was crashing my car. Um, oh. It was... It was, uh, I love that car. It was a 19, like 73 old Volvo that it had like the mag wheels and a sports, small sports steering wheel. And it was a, mm -hmm. it was a two door and it, it flew. It was so much fun to drive. And I shared it with my brother and, uh, we love that car. We called it the Jaffa, which is like, it's like an Australian version of an M&M, &M, which is orange, um, because it was an orange car. And I remember, on one of those trips at lunchtime, actually, I wasn't even going to get lunch. I was just bringing my friend to the train station. And this car in front of me, like, decided to turn a corner really, really slow and almost stop. And I slammed on the brakes and slid on some gravel and hit it. And I loved that car. My brother loved that car. He was so pissed at me for years oh. because he's like, I can't believe you crashed the Jaffa, not the Jaffa, no, no, anything, not the Jaffa, not the Jaffa. And because it was such an old car and it wasn't actually worth that much, so the insurance company just wrote it off. So we didn't even repair it. And we wanted it repaired, oh. but they're like, no, no, it's not worth, you know, like fixing it. So it's only worth like, you know, like 1500 bucks. So we'll just, you know, write it off and give you some money and you can go and buy another one. But, um, that I think was my my greatest regret. I, to this day, I still miss that car. It was it was uh, our first car, but it was an absolute joy to drive. Um, right, and I I, feel, I really I really miss you. that. I feel you, brother. Um, I feel you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is Mark Nelson and my Kalahohans way back in the day. Uh, thank you for joining us for that part of the you know that that uh, part of the uh, the show. Um, Admittedly, I have a couple more, but I might get indicted or go to jail and admit, uh, but I, I, I should quit while I'm ahead. Uh, what's the next segment, Mark? What do we got? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming up to a much-awaited segment. It's, uh, it's our favorite segment, actually, and um, it's going to be awesome because we have some awesome people joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is We Need New Friends. <laughs> Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor to have two former and current heartthrobs on our podcast, true bona fide megastars. Now, if the 90s had Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman, the 90s in the Philippines had Troy Montero, Montero, Laurel, and Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your titas, favorite artistas, the lean, mean <laughs> dancing machines, Troy Montero, Frank Laurel, and of course, Mark Nelson. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. What an introduction. Hey, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so my God. Oh, wow. Us, guys. Just watching the clip just it's brought so back good memories. <laughs> Gosh, uh, I just want to say good I, evening, I gentlemen. Oh, the nineties yeah, were—they were. were that whatsoever. was a good. That was a good year. Gosh, good, it was don't we wish awesome we could all go back era. now, right? Oh, oh back no, when we were all 
Carefree. I'll trade 2020. I'll trade yeah. 2020 for any year. Oh, yeah. Year. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, 100%. Uh, where we just so, like go out and enjoy and just do stupid crap. Goodness, <laughs> so good to be a part of this reunion. I just, I just caught on. You haven't seen Troy in what twenty plus years? I'm sorry, I, nineteen I just years. That? Nineteen years no. since we folded up. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Can, can I just give the Can I just give the audience a rundown of exactly why we're having this fantastic reunion on Throwback Thursday? This, of course, is a is a uh, impromptu reunion of the greatest television show in the '90s, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It was from 1998 to 2001. It was at 9 p.m. on a Saturday, and that is this no, fucking 10. prime time. Oh, oh 10, 10 p.m. Yeah. Live. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Live. Yeah. Okay. 10 p. It was as prime time as you can get. Uh, well, probably 10 p.m. because it's a little racy. You know, there was some there was some Mark Nelson cleavage and some Charlene Gonzalez <laughs> pie. But uh, it was prime time Saturday night and aired on TFC all around the world. I don't know how many countries. I don't know how many millions of viewers. But you guys were massive. I was watching you in the States before I even moved to the Philippines. You guys, this is pre-internet era. Keep on dancing was so massive that you guys even had your own album. Did you know that an album came out in 1999? So, guys, keep on dancing and guess, was and guess thing. what? And guess what I found? What? what? No, there you, you found go. It. <laughs> there is the oh, keep no. on dancing album. Is it oh, no no way. Looks pretty pristine. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I said, wait a minute. I know where I kept it. So I, I looked for it and I found it, and it's. It's That's awesome. It's pretty I, good. I have one as well. Pretty good. I shape. know I pretty have one. Shape. I just couldn't find it. But I know I found it somewhere. What? Do you remember, guys? We went gold. <laughs> no we way. It did. Yeah, we did. 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 We went gold, <laughs> and we didn't even sing in it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So are you guys singing on, the on there? Are you We're on the cover. We're on the cover. Yeah. That's no, we didn't. Sing. We didn't sing on the cover. I mean, we didn't sing on that album. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Out of yeah. out of you four, out of you three, who's the best singer? Franco for sure. Franco. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Franco nice. was the best singer. Nice. He was the best dancer. I pretend to be. I pretend to be. I can. I can oh, you guys think karaoke, <laughs> but no. Franco would throw down. That's for sure. Well, then who was the worst singer? I don't even sing in karaoke. Oh me. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> they no one yeah. has ever okay. heard me sing. It's that bad. I haven't uh, even heard me sing. It's that bad. All right. All right, then who was the best dancer? Who was the worst dancer? Uh, I'd say Franco, Franco probably again on the dancing and wow. Uh, I, I'm I not going to say who was the worst, the bus, but I know I know Mark was was not the not the best. But man, we hung in there, right? We tried, buddy. Right? We, we tried. You know, we, we tried. had so much fun. fun. We had so much oh, fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, guys. We no, had no, a blast. No, no, Franco, <laughs> you had fun. I had blood, sweat, and tears every rehearsal. I'm not sure if you remember this, but I would, you, like, every now and again, I'd have to tell the dancers, I was like, okay, guys, I love you. Thank you for being supportive. Just give me a minute. And I would literally go to a corner of the rehearsal studio and bang my head against the, the wall going, No way! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, my memory for, for choreographed dance reps is absolutely horrendous. It's it, wow. it still it still brings like yeah it still freaks yeah. me out when I think about it. Right. But you know one thing right, I, guys, I have to give it to the VIP dancers for just really making us look all really good. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Marty Beth like and the, the VIP dancers were like yeah, especially in the beginning. Right. I tell you what, those girls Walk would pull well me they would pull me around. Literally, it looked like I'm leading, but they're like pulling me, and I'm like, "Oh, thank you, thank you." And they, and while we're dancing, they would just go left, left, right, right, back, front, like back, and it's like, right. and they're smiling, yeah. right, right, yeah. left, yeah. left. <laughs> and so you're like here, you're like the instruction thing, screamed out, you're like, "Oh shit, yeah." <laughs> uh, yeah, the VIP the VIP dancers were absolutely the best. Um, yeah, they were amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they, having having a girl lead you and make it look like you're the one leading. Um, oh, yeah, that is a true talent. Yeah, I just remember right. back when, when, remember the first episode we did, uh, we taped, we finished at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. the next day. 
It was we started ridiculous. grinding at like wow. 8 the p.m., if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the pilot. That's the pilot. Correct? And yeah, I remember yeah, that's that. The pilot. That was brutal. Yeah. Hmm. And then when we, we finished, I was like, this is just like an R, uh, an R show, and we finished at like 9 a.m. It's like we taped for a teleserie or something. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. rough. And I remember thinking, I was thinking, what the hell did I let myself in for? Is this what it's <laughs> going to be like every week? Now, oh, guys, um, this, this show was prime time. Like I said, it was the most popular show. ABS really pushed it. It had a global audience. When did you realize, holy smack, I'm famous. I can't believe we are on this show. What, what, oh, what, 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 what was the moment? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh these are wow. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've never seen oh. these. Remember oh when it, this God. was the Halloween right. episode? Yeah, the Halloween I episode. That, Halloween episode. Right. that was great. Yeah, oh, yeah, I had guessed it. Oh, my gosh. Miss yeah. Universe. Yeah, oh, Dianara guessed it. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Dianara. Oh, yeah. I just remember, Those guys, awesome. anyone, anyone who was anyone were, was a guest on our show. Yeah. I just yes. remembered yes. If, if whatever, if, and before it was just kind of like who's who, they were on our show. Eventually it got to, yes. you know, a little bit more like, you know, uh, return guests because some people just, you know, could dance as well or they would come in to promote mm -hmm. or things like that. But I just remember, you know, we, everyone who was, Anyone showbiz guest on our show, it was, it was great. Yeah, that's right. Because we ran and for three years, and people. yeah, we ran for three years. And I remember when Heart Evangelista was just like I think fourteen years old, and that was one of the first wow. shows she guested in. Yeah, and oh wow, and, uh, yeah, go. We had everyone. I mean, I remember Ann Curtis. She was around that age as well when she joined as well, and she was uh, again like yeah, Star Circle, the same way Heart Heart had started. And I yeah. remember interviewing. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, you're Aussie. Yeah, cool. You know, welcome to the Philippines. And, and her accent was so, her Aussie accent was so strong. Oh my God. Super, <laughs> super, super Aussie. Uh, um, and then, yeah. And then go on to now. And, oh, um, talking about iconic people, Gary V launched his Hatao Na, uh, single right. on Keep yeah. On Dancing, Dancing with the Maneuvers. Yeah. And, it was my first time seeing him perform live in person. And I was like, good Lord, this guy is like the Filipino Michael Jackson. That guy can move, yeah. he can sing, yeah. you know, and yeah, incredible. It was, uh, it, was, it was so fun to watch. Joy? <laughs> uh, it was so overwhelming. Everything was new. Um, I just remember uh, having the opportunity or getting the chance to, to be on something like this. and. You know, I think since Troy and I were, uh, Mark and I were very new faces there, you know, um, eventually guests would come in and they would say, oh, so like, who are you? <laughs> you're a new guy, or, you know, you just, you just arrived, you're, oh, you're American or whatever, this and that. And, and I just remember just, you know, there's so much to learn. Um, and, you know, not just because I'd never been on really on TV before. I mean, I did a few things back in the States, but it was never anything like this. No, no, mm -hmm. I mean, not to this level of production or anything. And, uh, you know, so much pressure. And, uh, but I was like, I think this is how we're going to get in. You know, this is how we're going to do it. You know, I don't know how long the show is going to last, but it was a, a great opportunity. That's for sure. Well, can, can, I just, can I just I say that... The late '90s, when uh, when Troy Montero hit the scene, he was the hottest thing since sliced bread. He was everywhere, <laughs> every girl. I mean, you know, yes. like it was it was lug lug panty time all over wherever <laughs> wherever Troy moved. And I'm like, oh my god, Troy Montero, Troy Montero. He was one of the yes. first guys who was actually he was in shape. He had these, you know, like matinee idol, you know, looks and everything. The girls went crazy. His billboards were all over the place. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. that's what it was like. And yes. then you've got uh, Franco, who is the, the talented one who can, who can sing, who can dance, who'd hosted a dance show before as well. Yes. You know, that had this automatic connection already to, to Charlene as well and Mary Beth. And, and then there was that Australian guy that, cause just, they needed three guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think Frank was probably no, like, Mark, you were... 
Franco's probably like, I'm, I'm not holding saying. these two up this year. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling all the weight I, here. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just, you know what, the, the, fun, the fun part about it was when, when, um, when Charlene and I moved to ABS-CBN to do Keep On Dancing and, and both of you came in, it was just such a breath of fresh air. And it's like, okay, so let's see if we're going to, and remember when we did that on-cam audition where they put yes. all of us together? Like um, it was yeah. Yeah, just, just to make sure that do we all look good together? And I remember I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I'm the shortest one. I'm the smallest one. And they get, they're getting these two tall dudes again. But, you know, we just had so much fun. We clicked right then. And then I think that's what they saw on cam. And they didn't care if we could dance or not. And it just went on. Obviously. <laughs> I have to agree with you. Buddy. I have to agree with you. Yeah. So like, I, do remember, group, I do let's remember. Let's give this group a shot. Yeah, yeah, I do chemistry. remember telling them at the at the audition. I was like, um, "Yeah, I I don't really dance." They're like, "Oh, it's okay. We can teach you that." Famous We're last words. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna finally uh, get this off my chest. So I was still living in the states in October '99. That's when I moved here to the Philippines. But my mom, who was one of the first people to order TFC in our neighborhood in San Jose, California. Her ritual was every Saturday night, she would wash you guys. No Aww. one would talk to her. She, she, she wouldn't cook dinner. It was great because we'd get pizza that night because she wouldn't cook dinner. She would watch you guys. And, and no one, that was her t me time. And I hated the fact that it was you three. I don't know what is going on in her mind. You're giving my mom nasty thoughts, but I just want to call you guys oh out God. on it. And uh, uh, I remember specifically seeing Mark Nelson hosting a segment and I'm like, my mom's like, oh, you got the pogi, this Mark Nelson, grab it. And I'm just like, whatever, he sucks. And, you know, I, I, and, and it's just so funny. Like a few years later, Mark winds up being my buddy. But, uh, but uh, yeah, to, 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 to solidify what you said, Troy and, and, and uh, Franco, this was pre, um, you know, pre-internet. You guys were massive. You guys were huge. I mean, to make Mark Nelson wow. the third best looking guy in a group, you guys have to be really bogey, you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, this was when billboards mattered. This was when posters mattered. You, you know, you're every TV is wet dream. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I want to ask you guys, um, uh, apart from uh, apart from the show, what were the other impacts that the 90s had on you guys? I mean, like, you know, what were your favorite, you know, gadgets or, or you know, do you have any memories of uh, when uh, when you were still studying? um you know the crazy stuff that you would do that kind of thing well i i was in japan i i went to school in japan i went to college in japan from 1990 right. to 1996 so i was there for five and a half years so um the mem my memories of the 90s was just like one of the best times of my life because that was fresh from high school i was 17. i left mm -hmm. for japan and i just lived independently uh during that time and and when i came home in 96 that's when i entered show business and so i mean the 90s was just really special for me i mean a lot of life-changing life-altering um moments for me and that's when i that's when i met my my wife now as well that's right you yeah. wait did you guys meet when uh you performed rama sita was that yes. when you guys met for the first time? Yes, yes. She was um, she was actually the producer for Amatita. And that's when I w met her. And she was married to her first husband back then. And so um, she was my boss. <laughs> so literally my boss lady. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the, the stage name thing because uh, everyone knows he was Troy Montero. But, and mm -hmm. that's what we've been referring to right now in the show because, I mean, that's what your handle says and everything. But we know that you're actually Cody. Right. Cody Miller. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cody Miller. And, and right. Casey is, yeah, is, is, is Casey Miller. But um, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Troy Montero Monica uh, stuck, and that's what you, that's how everyone knows you now. Um, that's right. Uh, right. How many hey, people hey, in the hey. Philippines get to call you Cody? Uh, you know, of course, a lot of you guys know, and a lot of my, my friends know this. So when they, they, they call me either way, it, it's fine. Um, but I do get, you know, the off um, friend or, or 
I guess um, someone in social media referred to me as, as Cody and just trying to maybe maybe hit a, a, a note there to see if I'll be like, you know, whoa, they know my name, you know, like, yeah. oh, I saw that thing last week, Cody. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, do I know this person? <laughs> and, and that's how it usually to get my attention really bad if I'm walking through the crowd and someone shouts out Cody. There's, there's not too many of them around here. So yeah. um, there are quite a few uh, Troys, though, now, I have to admit. And I only say that because I've been drinking. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a quite, quite a few little boys running around named Troy now. Um, not that I had anything to do with this. <laughs> you, time, that, as saying, far as you know. As far as I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> Not like that. I'm just saying. I, I get a DM every once in a while saying, "Hey, you know, I named my my son after you," and I'm like, you know, I always joke around in this yeah, in like, time of 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 that we're in about social media, and and you know, yeah. a lot of these young kids would be like, "Who are these guys?" And I'm like, "You may not know me, but I bet your mom does." <laughs> <laughs> right? Your mom, your teeth, they all know us. But I mean, just th that, that, uh, you can't get a name any more artista than Troy Montero. I swear that that's very <laughs> impressive. Um, I don't know where you pulled that out of. Was that a, like a, a app, app artista oh. generator or something, or, uh, you know, childish Gambino or uh, that it is, is something along those lines. Yeah. How yeah. did you come up with it? <laughs> uh, you know, when I first came over and I was lucky enough to meet someone named Daddy Wowie, who is a wonderful, wonderful guy. <laughs> and and he was my first manager. And I remember when he was talking to me and he was giving me his spiel of why he should manage me and everything. And he said, first of all, we're going to have to change your name because I think <laughs> Cody Miller sounds too American, but I have this vision. Troy Montero and I was like going damn that sounds crazy and I was like come to the Philippines gonna change your name why not I was like let's do this I was so pumped for it you know there's a his his idea was he wanted it to be like you know Troy sounds like you know uh comes from like Helen of Troy Let's pull this all together. Montero sounds like Pajero. It's very Spanish and, you know. Uh, <laughs> and macho. Uh, name recall. Yeah, yeah. And macho. So, um, and, and, and yeah, so they went with it. And, and it's still here. It's part of my life. So, mm. yeah. Hey, I, yeah. yeah if, I, I remember Daddy if, Wowie. He was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy Wowie. I'll tell you guys right now, if there was a Hall of Fame of artista names, Mark Nelson, Franco Laurel, and Troy Montero, you guys are at the, the top. Ang pinaka oh, best that's... artista names, uh, real or not. I mean, oh, it's really thank impressive. you. Thank you. That's so <laughs> nice. Meanwhile, so people, nice you. People are still, meanwhile, people are still trying to figure out how to pronounce Revilson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it because I'm the only one, and that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with it. So, no, well, Franco brought up pagers, and I know we all had them. And yes. uh, I don't know if you and your crew developed pager language, pager talk. You know what I'm saying? Because you could only fit so many characters into yeah. one page. Yeah. You you wanted to like maybe say hello, which is which was uh, uh, four three seven seven zero, or of course one four three, which means I love you, which came from our era. Yes. If you guys uh, uh, recognize yeah. that, but um, yeah, remember pager talk? I thought that was pretty cool that we in our generation came up with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember mine exactly. was easy call. <laughs> yeah, I yeah um, I had a few. Yeah, I had a few. I just remember, you know, of course you had the the basics, the nine one one, the four one one, the one four three, and all that stuff. Right, but right. I right. also remember yeah. when you when you called in and you left with the operator, right? You yes. left like a message with an operator, and I remember going like, you know how hard it was to like do like a booty call back then. You're like, hey, come on over because you know what? And she's like, sir, I cannot say that. <laughs> sir, I cannot say yes, that. I'm she like, type okay, wait, wait, wait. Yes. Um, okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. yeah what what, what's so, the code yeah, for booty? What was your code word? What was your code word had, then? There definitely was was code words for that in numbers. You know what I mean? Because nine one one. I mean nine one one is legit nine one one, right? Can't use that for. Yeah, you know, yeah, going out or hanging out or whatever, but people did, right, right, right. right. 
Yeah. Well, oh. you you but, clear you clearly had a higher plan because I couldn't afford the plan that came with an operator to type in. So we would just do pager <laughs> talk. So if you wanted a booty call, it would be I remember nine one one sixty nine, and then that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you gotta make do, you know. You gotta. Make yeah, do. Yeah. Wow. It is what it is. I, you right. see, this is something I'm learning for the first time because during pager era is when I had a girlfriend, uh -huh. so I never like got any of that. So, I never oh, knew right? that. So, I never knew so, that, guys. But, I was like, really? This is, hey, I'm learning something yeah, this... new here. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> booty Fist call through easy Cody. call. Wow, wow, wow. Fist bump. Yeah. Yeah. Booty yeah. call through easy call. Yeah, it, it's That's why it was easy called call. easy call. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, well, uh, well speaking of speaking of material God. and fabric, I remember the one time that um, that I rolled up to the studio and I looked at Troy and I'm like, holy shit, we're wearing ex exactly the same suit. And that was for the whatever safari animal print jungle <gasps> episode. And we're both in we're both wearing suits made out of the same leopard print. Like head to toe, three piece suit in leopard print. Wait, I have a story there. Okay. Oh, I no, was no, looking no. for the I was looking for the photo, but I have a story there. Okay, so I remember that episode. We would do like um special episodes where it's like the Halloween. We'd dress up like um you saw earlier. Like Mark was the devil, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and I yeah. was the vampire. Anyway, so there was this one episode you were talking about. I think we all. Our executive producer back then, who the late Joel Shervo, um, said, "Okay, yeah. everybody, we're gonna do an animal print episode." So I, I told JC, and you know sometimes JC is so whimsical. So I said, "JC, can you make me? I know it's it's if if, if it's okay with you, can you make me an yeah. animal print outfit?" So I thought he was gonna make me some like leopard print or tiger print or yeah. some cool zebra print. So I saw Cody's. Uh, outfit and so and Mark and I said, like, oh my gosh, they're wearing the same print. And then here comes JC. He came in and then you know what print I wore? I wore a cow print. So everybody was in seeing the leopard. And I wore... I'm not kidding. I love JC and he made it. He's so whimsical. He says, oh, you said animal print. I know. JC said, oh, you said animal print. So I came up with a cow print. I'm like, but they're all like, I know Charlene was sexy. wearing some leopard sexy print. And I was like, I look like a cow. I was like, I was like, I remember that. And I was like, Franco was like super exotic, buddy. I know. Exotic as a cow. And we were doing live animal shows animal. back then. So I couldn't like, okay, what am I going to do? I said, oh, fine. I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to wear this and wear it proud, looking like a cow and amidst all these exotic animal prints. Yeah. So, yeah I stood out. Troy, the Troy's, cow looking, there, buddy. Troy's looking like a leopard. Charlene's looking like a tiger. I'm looking like a leopard. And Franco's looking like prey. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, but it was so much fun. <laughs> Oh, anyway, oh guys, you know what? You, we have had so much fun. We're so happy you guys were able to come on the show. Uh, we, we could, this could go on forever, but uh, I sadly, know. we, uh, I know we only asked to ask you guys to join us for a little while. Um, we'd love to have you guys on the show again. This has been a great trip down memory lane. Uh, well, thank, thank you for you having so, us. So, so much for joining us. Thank um, you. And hopefully, Great. after all, all this craziness, we get to catch up uh, in real life too. Yeah. We should. We should do that. After Cody, I haven't this, seen yeah, you in so long. It. I know, yeah. buddy. We, uh, we it'd be great we, to see everyone uh, face to face. Yeah. And catch yeah. up with we, life. I mean, so much has happened. I mean, we have kids now. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, to our audience, if uh, you've enjoyed uh, catching up with these guys, and please follow them on their Instagram account. You can see them there at Troy Montero and at FJ Laurel. Um, uh, Franco is, is a man about town, a uh, talented man. Uh, Troy Montero, if he's on vacation, he's usually naked. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you get away with guys. That one, <laughs> Troy, Franco, you guys are living your best life. It's so fun to follow you on social media. Thank you so much for your time, man. Thank we you. really appreciate you. Thank you. 
Thank you for having us. Thank you. God bless you guys. Oh man, that was so much fun. Uh, oh, I'm um, but, up. <laughs> I so am I. That that was so much fun. But you know what? It's time for our it's time for our next segment, and this is always a uh, a fan favorite, even though it's the one that we dread the most. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, without much further ado, it's time for the Galo time. Oh, you know what? If we don't do this, we don't grow. So we need to do this. I, I kind of semi enjoy it. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. Why did we? Why did we get rid of uh, Troy? He should have hung out with us as well. Oh, yeah, I don't that's think his Tagalog's up to par, right? Jeez. Yeah, and then we could have Franco s- uh, Dutchess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, Nelson, you want to take this first? Uh, oh, then, well, there's there's or, two. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll I'll take. I'll take Lolo and you take Karen. Okay, let me get into All character right. first. Hold on, okay. I've Hold been on, laughing man. and I've been I've been crying. I'm so full of many emotions right now. Let me get into character, okay? Makdo commercial. All right, here we go. Okay, You're uh, who's Lolo? Ika or uh, ako? Ah, uh, uh, ako. Okay, sige. ako si Lolo. <laughs> okay, sige po. Kamo sa po Lolo. <clears throat> Kasi Ang tagal na natin hindi nakita Gina. O sige, kain na Gina. Karin po. Ito para sa paborito kong apo, si Karen. Okay, does, can anyone... Yeah, let's, I, let's I remember see the that clip. commercial. You don't remember this commercial? I think I do. I think okay. I do. Let, let, well, let's watch the clip. Okay. Karen po. Kasi... Ang tagal na natin hindi nakikita, Gina. O sige, kaya na, Gina. Karen po. Ito, para sa paborito kong apo, si Karen. Um, I did, That's I was okay. listening on some of the comments, um, but thank you guys for joining. I want to I wanna comment on this one. Why can't Mark Troy and, and Daniel Matsunaga and others learn to speak? in uh, Filipino fluently. Well, out of all of those names you mentioned, Daniel Matsunaga, who has zero Pinoy in him, speaks very good Tagalog, actually. Um, well, better than us, anyway. So uh, yes, he will represent us. True. <laughs> yes, there, thank you. Daniel and Fabio. <laughs> yes, yes. Fabio Ide Fabio can, also, can also represent us. Um, those Brazilians. Tagalog, wow. actually, for... Yeah, Tagalog for a non-Tagalog, someone that wasn't brought up speaking Tagalog, is actually a very difficult language. Both Revelson, we've talked about this before. Both Revelson and I did have Tagalog tutors at some stage. We did try and learn, but it is, uh, yeah, it's not like English. Actually, I know that English is a tough language for people that didn't grow up speaking it as well. But uh, yeah, Tagalog is really hard, just like the... Yeah, they're tongue twisters. And that's that's my my issue. I read and I'm like, I need to break this one word up into like five different parts in order to know how to pronounce it. But you know, I mean, again, sliding doors example. If we stayed the course and and uh, studied Tagalog, we would be hosting teleseries or or maybe uh, acting and 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 following the route of what Troy and um, um, you know Franco did, but. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the route that we did. You know, we went on yeah. to host international shows uh, simply because of the fact that we couldn't speak Tagalog. So um, there it is. You know, I won't take I won't take anything back from uh, that experience. I, I um, um, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of glad things turned out the yeah. way they did. Yeah, no, as, as am I. And I, I always want to make sure that I'm comfortable uh, expressing myself correctly in a language that I'm comfortable in. So that was always my thing. I was like, even if I learn Tagalog, and I think both you and I know some, uh, like a little bit of basic Tagalog now, but it's mm. never comfortable enough to the point where we would feel comfortable working in Tagalog because we wouldn't give oh, justice no. to the script or to, yeah, to the hosting engagement, which we want to do. Anyway, so on to the next uh, spe- or the next uh, script for Tagalog time. What is it? Let's see. Ooh. Oof. All right, this one's all you, buddy. What? <laughs> all right, here we go. Katrina Halili. Um, <clears throat> it looks like it's medio serious, medio drama. Okay, here we go. Pero alam mo, honestly, 
minsan hindi kita maintindihan kasi ang sweet sweet mo na sa akin tapos bigla mo na lang ako hindi papansin bakit hold for dramatic pause there you go ooh i Damn. like the dramatic pause you like that all right. you like that nailed it nailed it all right let, let's all let's right. see the uh that was tough let's see the real thing so you know andito <laughs> i know i'm really having a good time thanks so pero alam mo honestly minsan hindi kita maintindihan kasi ang sweet sweet mo na sa akin tapos bigla mo na lang akong di papansinin alam mo isang linggo na nga tayong feeling close pero parang misteryoso ka pa rin sa akin well sorry ha huh? i'm uh, major moody but uh, you know you're really interesting to me and i just got to know what's with my feet I'll do Troy's line. I'll do Troy's line. Ready? Generic Amboy. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, oh, I forgot his line. Oh, man, but we would easily do that. We would easily get that character. Oh, man. It's the only, it's the only character we could do. It's the only character we can play. Oh, oh dear. yeah. Acting's tough. Acting is tough in any language. I give them props. That's why we host. Hosting yeah. is tough too, but uh, acting is another animal. Oh my he God. I absolute... don't know if we did it justice. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Well, we're only, we're only doing uh, two this week, but uh, hopefully next week we'll, we'll have a few more. Uh... <laughs> no, we only are doing no? one next week. <laughs> Uh, spoil, although, spoil. Although, although I would like to do the Karen one again. Oh, you want to do the Karen one again? I would like to do okay. the Karen McDowell one again. Oh, so as you as Lolo? No, no, no. You as Lolo, I as Karen. Oh, now that okay. We've seen All right, it. Sige, sige. Deal? All right. Deal? All right. Sige, sige. Here we go. <sighs> All right. I, mean, I need to hunch over. Look like. Look like Lolo. Kasi ang tagal na na natin hindi nakikita, Gina. Sige. Kaya na, Gina. Karen po. <laughs> Eto. <laughs> para sa paborito kong apo. Si Karen. And cut. Yes, we nailed it. We nailed it. Yes. That one I love. That one I love. Fuck that. Re they should reissue that one. That that would sell a million burgers. Do it. Here, here. Oh dear. <laughs> God. Uh, this is, yeah. The kind of it's, it's beginning to be fun, actually. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I said that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, don't encourage here. our producers. Don't encourage our producers. UP, Neil, Kim, <laughs> Martin, you didn't hear that. We hate it. We hate it. This is work for us. Uh, this is the only time during this podcast this feels like work is when we do Tagalog time. Hi, Nako. Here, here. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's time to do some, uh, some work. Oh, uh, what do they say? Oh, acting at its finest. Thank you, Gladys. Um, Cyrus says, you guys are so fun to watch during this segment. Um, can you love that one? Thank you. Thank you for your support, guys. Um, I'm so glad that your standards are so incredibly low. We really appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, I love our deaf audience. Clearly they're, uh, hard of hearing. So thank you also. <laughs> and our blind audience <laughs> for viewing our acting. Oh man! Um, uh, wow, time check. Anyway, We're at one forty-one, Nelson. All right. Okay. Let Let's uh, Let's get close to closing. Thank you guys for watching uh, up until this point, and now it is time for us to reward you for all of the trouble that you've been through watching us. Uh, it is our raffle time. Okay. So once again, we're giving out uh, a wonderful gift. Um, it is a thousand 
pesos. Um, we are giving out uh, this to one winner. This is from our friends at freshproduce.ph, and uh, they will deliver that fresh to your door. Um, if you do happen to win, then please make sure that you send us a message on Facebook, and uh, we'll get your details there. All right, so without much further ado, let us find out who has won. Drum roll, please. Oh my oh! God, Aziza. Congratulations, Aziza. Yay. All right, congratulations. All right, good job. Thank, well, I mean, she has been commenting quite a lot. So yeah, it does deserve, she does deserve it. And she watches every week like clockwork. We love seeing her right here on the show. Um, awesome. Thank you very, very much. Uh, for those of you who didn't win, hopefully you will be able to win next week. Um, uh, and the guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. It's been so much fun reminiscing about uh, about the 90s, about what it was like back in school. Um, uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to read out all of your comments, but uh, it's great uh, seeing quite a few of you. Uh, quite a few of you comment on all the great things that uh, all the crazy things that you got up to. No, um, apart from yeah, we had a fantastic time. We are at 144. That's 15 minutes over the allotted time of uh, 90 minutes. You know, as they say, time flies when you're having fun. We really, really appreciate you guys not just hanging out with us, but also commenting. Uh, I, I'm always reading the comments, and you guys are so smart, so funny, and 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 I love engaging with you guys. Uh, we need to make it. I, I don't know if we can just don't you know dedicate uh, at least 30 40 minutes just hanging out with uh with the uh, audience and just just um um engaging with them but you know we appreciate you yeah. guys thank you so much for hanging out with us yeah now this has been uh, such a great topic it's been much fun we've had amazing guests of course uh with troy and franco it was great going down memory lane with them um and our producers have done it to us again. Last last week, uh, we were like, "Oh, and join us next week as our topic is." And we're like, "Oh, it's 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 throwback," and it was the first time hearing about it. Well, uh, we now have the topic for next week. <laughs> Do you know what it is, Mr. Fernandez? I just looked at it been... right now, and my eyeballs are big, <laughs> and my jaw just dropped. Um, go ahead and say what our next topic is next week, Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, next week it is all about sex. Oh yep. boy. Uh, uh, that's going to be an interesting one. And uh, we're going to have lots to say. Um, and I'm sure we would love to hear from you guys. Um, any questions that you might have, um, any stories you might have. Uh, this may not be safe. This next episode may not be safe for work. <laughs> um, With that but, being uh, said, yeah, should... yeah. Oh, man. We got. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. All right. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we need good vibes. We need more love. We need more hugs. But Mr. Nelson, what is it that we especially need? We need new friends. Thank you Thank very you much, so ladies much, and gentlemen. Good night.